Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. The 20 most important muscles for winning fights based on science, experience, and obviously the Pareto principle. No opinions, straight facts. Let's get straight to it. And keep in mind, for a muscle to score high, it has to influence all aspects of fighting. Power, strength, agility, defense, speed, cardio, endurance, you name it. Right. It also has to be relevant across all fighting styles of so boxing, kicking, wrestling, you name it. All right, let's go. Traps. I'm going to put that in crucial. Right. And that includes upper traps, middle traps, lower traps. And obviously the whole rhomboid area helps you with offense, helps you with defense, helps you with balancing your shoulder girdle doing fights, helps you with combos and boxing. And obviously helps protect against knockouts since the upper traps help support the neck. Right. It is very hard to defend and even to attack if you have weak traps right i mean how are you going to retract your shoulder blades you know how are you going to elevate your shoulder blades you know to protect your neck i could go on and on but anyway traps crucial category not to mention they look intimidating as fuck right if you have powerful developed traps that alone is a good deterrent remember guys one of the most important and underrated aspects of fighting is the intimidation factor it's the same in the animal kingdom right it's better to prevent fights than to engage with them so if you look intimidating that's a win in itself right it also gives you that psychological edge over your opponent next chest for obvious reasons i'm going to put that in crucial right very hard to generate power very hard to throw a powerful punch without if you have a weak chest it's also going to be very hard for you to defend in a in a wrestling bout you know in the grappling bout if you have a weak chest right it's going to help you push your opponent off it's going to help you extend your arm so i can go on and on right so for obvious reasons chest is in crucial category not to mention the ability to just push your opponent off balance right very very useful in a street fight as well next forearms i'm also going to put those in crucial they are actually very underrated for fighting right and the argument most people give is well you don't need your forearms to kick yeah but you do need your forearms to grapple to wrestle obviously you need your forearms obviously for punching power at the point of contact right bigger forearms not only allow you to keep your fist bald but keep in mind power is mass times acceleration right so any bit of mass that does not hurt cardio is a plus right so at the point of contact Obviously, if you have huge forearms, that's going to do a lot more damage and that's going to play into the mass part of the power equation. Also, keep in mind that if you're grappling, if you're doing MMA and somebody puts you in a chokehold, well, guess what? You're going to need powerful forearms to get the opponent's arm off of you, right? There's nothing worse than wrestling or trying to break a submission hold and not being able to grip your opponent's arm. Think about it. Forearms also help with preventing your opponent from putting you in a submission maneuver so i can go on and on about the benefits of forearms but again very important for fighting next your serratus anterior i'm going to put that in crucial right? i'm going to put it right next to chest because they pretty much serve very very similar functions right there's a reason why it's called the boxer's muscle it's really going to help you protract your scapula and obviously stabilize your shoulder girdle as well but again if you're training your chest and your delts especially your pushing motions right your horizontal pushing moments chances are you're hitting that anyway right so you don't have to hyper focus on it next your biceps i'm going to put that in it depends right it depends on the fighting style it depends on the fighting uh match whether you're boxing wrestling kickboxing right it, it's one of those muscles that really depends right for example if, if all you're doing is kicking well obviously you don't need your biceps a lot but if you're wrestling obviously it's going to move a lot higher in boxing obviously it plays a role in fact every muscle plays a role but it's not that crucial right you could throw a lot of powerful combinations um without powerful biceps again that does not mean that it's useless it just means that it does not score as high relative to the other muscles right you could throw a powerful hook um without powerful biceps you could throw a powerful jab right without powerful biceps even though the goal of the jab is obviously not power but you get the point um, you could throw a powerful uppercut with a powerful biceps. You still have to flex your arm, right? But arm flexion obviously does not play a powerful role on the knockout potential of your uppercut, right? So that's why I put it in depends. It really depends on context and the sport. Now in wrestling, it's a whole different story. Very important in wrestling, any grappling situation. Next, calves. That's another muscle I'm going to put it in depends, right? It's very overrated. Yes, obviously you need your calf muscles, right? To plant your foot before you throw a hug, before you throw any punch. Your calves are going to play a role. It's also going to play a role in maintaining your balance during wrestling. But the only reason I'm not ranking it higher is because relative to the rest of these muscles up here, it's not that impactful, right? In fact, a lot of fighters, a lot of great fighters have shady calves, right? 
because again keep in mind it's not just about the size of the muscle it's also about the power output right power is mass times acceleration so you can have a small muscle but as long as you're able to accelerate it as long as you're able to recruit those motor neurons then you can still output a lot of power even if muscle size is uh, kept to a minimum right fighters do it all the time right john jones has some of the shittiest calves i've ever seen in fact most black people do but he would knock your ass out any day of the week same thing with deontay wilder same thing with floyd same thing with Izzy, I mean, I could name so many great fighters who have quote-unquote shitty calves, right? So it's not just about the size of the muscle. It's about how much force you can generate with that muscle, as well as the biomechanics and all that stuff. But anyway, let's keep this video simple for a beginning audience. Next, your lats. I'm going to put your lats in the crucial category. Very underrated muscle for fighting, especially for boxing and wrestling, right? It's crazy how when most people think of fighting muscles, they think of chest and shoulders and biceps, but they do not think of your lats. Your lats are extremely important for generating power. And just like the traps, especially the mid traps, they also help in retracting your arm, which is extremely important for combos. All right, next, your tibia, not that important. Come on, let's be honest. Again, it's not that important. Again, it doesn't mean it's useless, right? I didn't put it at trash, but it's not that important. Yeah, if you're kicking a lot, then sure why not but in the grand scheme of things you're not going to lose a fight because your tibia was underdeveloped you're not going to win the fight you're not going to be world heavyweight champion of the world or mma champion because you train your tibia more than everybody else right so not that important next your spinal erectors obviously crucial for maintaining balance for defending against submission attempts i could go on and on one of the most underrated muscles for athletes in any sport remember balance is everything in fighting next your abs mandatory i repeat mandatory and coming from me that's saying a lot right because you guys know i feel like abs are overblown in the aesthetic i'm tired of naturals overemphasizing the abs and cutting all the time which in which in turn keeps them from maximizing muscle growth because they always want to be as lean as possible but when it comes to fighting i got to be objective right mandatory right your core is priceless when it comes to fighting in any fighting sport i don't care if you're doing mma i don't care if you're doing wrestling you're doing boxing you're doing kickboxing you're doing muay thai doesn't matter you gotta have a powerful core most of your punching power believe it or not does not come from your arms or your shoulders even though they play a role right it comes from your core and your lower body right so abs mandatory you gotta have a strong core helps with offense helps with defense helps with balance i mean i could go on and on right and i'm gonna put your obliques right next to that right most of the power from your punches is gonna come from your ability to rotate your hips and transfer as much kinetic energy as possible to your arm right so the power comes from your lower body including your core right do not neglect those muscles if you're a fighter especially if you want to throw a powerful knockout punch right you're gonna have to twist and rotate that's also all right next glutes another very very underrated muscle for fighting i'm putting that in mandatory right again for bodybuilding i don't give a shit about glutes but this video is about combat not bodybuilding right again most of the power from your punches are going to come from your lower body especially your glutes right it's no coincidence that studies have shown that even sprinters think about it 100 meter sprinters one of the biggest predictors of how fast the person is meaning how much power they can generate from their legs right because sprinting is really you generating generating as much force as possible into the ground to propel yourself forward like a space shuttle um studies have found that one of the biggest predictors of 100 meter sprint speed is how powerful and how big the runner's glutes are right same thing with the nba right how high somebody jumped their vertical jump it's not their calves believe it or not it's their glutes right and obviously their quads and stuff like that but mainly the glutes and that brings us over to fighting again you know a lot of your power in fact most of your power is going to come from your core and your legs and when it comes to legs mainly glutes and i'm going to put hamstrings right next to glutes for the very same reason you cannot generate maximum power in a punch or a push without recruiting your glutes your hamstrings and also you guessed it your quads right notice how the lower body muscles that nobody cares about are actually the most important for fighting right they're important for punching they're important for kicking they're important for wrestling i mean you cannot think of any fighting style uh that's not heavily influenced by how powerful your legs are again that doesn't mean your legs have to be big right they just have to be powerful right so if they're big then great right as long as you don't let that fuck up your cardio but if they're small then work on power explosive movements so that you can recruit your high threshold motor units as efficiently as possible right at the end of the day the only thing that matters is power right force and that's going to come once again from either having mass 
or acceleration or both right so if you have massive muscles you don't need as much acceleration to deliver force if you have small muscles then you're gonna need a lot of acceleration uh to increase force output so pick and choose obviously because of weight classes right fighters tend to gravitate towards focusing on explosiveness and speed and acceleration because if they focus on mass too much obviously they have to move up a weight class which uh, it's counterproductive. But anyway, next, your neck. And I'm going to put both your sternocleidomastoid and your splenius in the same category. Mandatory, right? Where is your splenius? I'm going to put it right here, right? Your neck is one of the most, if not the most important muscles for fighting, not because of offense, but because of defense. And if you're familiar with my advice, whether it's on fitness, stock trading, testosterone, doesn't matter. You know, I always emphasize defense, risk management. Defense always comes first. I repeat, defense comes before offense and preventing a knockout is the most important rule in fighting it's just like chess right rule number one is protect your king right and then control the, the center and develop your back pieces and all that shit but really if you get knocked out the fight is over it's, it's crazy that i have to say it because so many people focus on offense and then neglect defense if you have a weak neck a fighter who's not as experienced as you who's not as strong as you can get a lucky hit on you and knock you the fuck out right you need powerful neck and obviously powerful traps to help stabilize your head so that you don't get a concussion, right? Look at Mike Tyson's neck. Look at uh, Joel Romero's neck. Some of the guys who can take a lot of hits to the head without getting knocked out have very strong necks. And, and obviously, there's studies on this as well, right? Having a strong neck reduces concussion risk by a significant amount. So train your neck, guys, not just for aesthetics, because you should train your neck for aesthetics in the first place, but mainly for combat. There's a reason why when a guy has a huge, thick neck, he just looks intimidating. We evolved to respect that like a motherfucker because you know it's going to be hard to knock his ass out and it's going to be hard to obviously choke him out, right? And sure enough, we have a lot of androgen receptors around the trapezius region for good reasons. And obviously a little bonus to having a strong neck is you could deliver a very powerful headbutt. All right, next we have shoulders. I'm also going to put that in mandatory simply because... Think about it. You could have every other muscle in your body fully trained, fully developed, whatever. If your shoulders are trash, you screwed. Unless all you do is kick. But then again, you know, how are you going to defend? How are you going to block hits? You know, you're not going to dodge everything. You're not Neo. So shoulders are mandatory for offense and defense. Right. And once again, there's a reason why we evolved to be attracted to men with bigger shoulders. Right. There's a reason for that. Shoulders influence your punching power, your ability to grapple your ability to defend your ability to throw objects i mean just think about it we really do not give our shoulders enough credit all everyone cares about is biceps 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 guys shoulders are the most important muscle on your arm more important than biceps more important than triceps more important than forearms right and speaking of triceps i'm gonna put that in crucial again for the same reason as chest right you're gonna need it to obviously push opponents off of you you're gonna need your triceps to extend your arm and deliver a knockout blow you're gonna need your triceps for defense you're gonna need your triceps for preventing certain submission holds very important muscle for fighting obviously next you have your serratus next teres major and minor obviously i'm gonna put that right next to lats and mid back right same purpose it is crucial for rotation and obviously stabilization of your shoulder joint last but not least your heart everyone forgets your heart is a muscle mandatory you gotta have i repeat you gotta have good cardio in any fighting situation it's funny most people under emphasize how important cardio is in fighting that thing oh as long as i could knock him out as long as i'm fast i'll be good guys all of these muscles that you see here guess what they're gonna need oxygen right so if you don't knock your opponent out in the first few seconds you are fucked if your cardio sucks right because anaerobic respiration only lasts a few seconds right you're gonna be gasping for air and everything that you learn doing practice or doing your fucking sparring practice is gonna go out the window because you gassed out right so you, so you gotta prioritize your cardio not every fight is gonna be over in round one all right guys if this video helped don't forget to click the like button subscribe and support the channel on the website i'm out